Theorems and proofs are central to every mathematical subject. Theory of computation is mathematically rigorous. Let us consider this mathematical statement. The sum of any two consecutive numbers is odd. When we see a statement like this, we tend to quickly evaluate sum of few consecutive numbers and see if there is a counterexample that can make this statement false. After evaluating several examples, we might be tempted to declare this as true, but not so fast. Any mathematical statement that holds true for many cases, but has not yet been rigorously proved is called a conjecture. Many conjectures exist in mathematics that are yet to be proven true. If a conjecture is proved to be true mathematically, it is called a theorem. Mathematicians tend to reserve the word theorem for statements of special interest and have significant implications. Occasionally, we prove statements that are interesting only because they assist in the proof of another more significant statement. Such statements are called lemmas. In other words, theorems are the rock stars and lemmas are the supporting troop. Occasionally, theorems help conclude other related statements that are true. Such statements are called corollaries. For a statement to be declared mathematically true, you can bank on few existing methods that are formal and bulletproof. I'm listing the three methods we use extensively in the course going forward. First, observe all the terms in the statement pretty closely. What is the mathematical definition of consecutiveness? What is the mathematical definition of odd and not odd, uh, which is even? What are the numbers in consideration? Are they natural, integers, rational, or real? Once you have listed through definitions of all the key terms in the statements and narrowed down on your scope, rewrite the statement in the format of if p then q. Try to check if any of these techniques work to prove this. Let us start first with the technique of direct proof or proof by construction. This is often used on the statements that can directly be proved by constructing the proof from definitions. We shall start by assuming P is true and by using P and the definitions, we show that Q must be true. All right, let's get started. First, we assume that A and B are consecutive integers. From the definition of consecutive integers, we know that B is equal to A plus one. So the sum A plus B can be rewritten as two A plus one. Perfect. Now look at the definition of an odd number. Clearly there exists a K, which is A in this case, that matches with the definition of an odd number. Hence, this statement is proved directly by construction from definitions. Well, we do not always have the liberty to construct proofs directly from the definitions. Check out the statement, root two is irrational. This is just a single statement and it is not in the format of P implies Q. Also, if you look at the definition of irrational, it strongly implies root two cannot be in the format of a rational number, say M by N, where M and N are integers. This is where the technique of proof of contradiction can be used. We start by assuming that the opposite of the given statement is true. In this case, it is root two is rational and fly with it to see if we arrive at any contradiction. If root two is rational, it can be expressed as M divided by N. If M and N are divisible by the same integer greater than one, divide both by the you know, largest of such integer. Keep doing it till you can no longer do it. You can see that no matter what, at least one of 
m and n must be an odd number. Uh, try out a few examples, uh, you'd see what I'm saying. So, all right, so rewrite this in this way and square both sides. From the definition of even numbers, we see that left-hand side of the equation is even. Hence, right-hand side is also even. Therefore, m2 is even, as the square of an odd number is always odd. We can write m is equal to 2k for some integer k, based on the definition of an even number. Substituting it gives this, which clearly shows that n should also be even. But earlier we deduced that at least one of m and n must be an odd number, hence a contradiction. Which means our assumption that root 2 is rational is not true, strongly implying it is irrational. This line of thought is backed by the Boolean logic and you can dig deeper if you're interested. All right, another powerful proof technique we'll be using in this course is proof by induction. Proof by induction is an advanced method used to show all the elements of an infinite set have a specified property. To demonstrate proof of induction, I will use one of the popular examples out there sum of first n numbers from the infinite set of natural numbers. Proof by induction starts with the base case. Usually, we pick the first element from the infinite set. In this case, n is equal to 1, so writing out left-hand side, you're going to have i equals to 1 to 1 of i, which is basically 1. Now let's evaluate rhs, uh, which is the right-hand side. Uh, substituting 1 in there is going to give me 1 again. Okay. So left-hand side and right-hand side are the same, so the base case holds true. The next important thing is induction hypothesis. What it says is this equation holds true for any element k. So that's our assumption. So if we have k elements and then we're taking the summation of it, the value of that would be k into k plus 1 by 2. So this is the assumption that we are making. And finally, it has the induction step. Okay, so we want to check if that holds true for the k plus 1 element. To do that, there are rules though. Okay, so you should start with the left-hand side. We don't touch the right-hand side at all. So we start with the left-hand side and we have that uh, expression. Now let's expand it. Let's expand it. Uh, so we have element still k and then we have k plus 1 as well. What we could do is use induction hypothesis. Okay, so we are allowed to use induction hypothesis in the induction step uh, because we know the first k elements add up to that expression. I'm going to substitute it there. Now we'll work through this expression and try to arrive at the actual statement. Okay, so, so let me expand this. Uh, I can rewrite it this way, k plus 2 multiplied by k plus 1 by 2. Uh, I'll rearrange that in such a way that it looks like the original equation that I have up there, okay? There you go. We have arrived at this equation which looks exactly like the right-hand side of the original statement. We shall practice enough examples to get this concept correct, okay? Take care.